Okay, so let's finish off with a nice little problem here. The radius of a circular table is measured to be 30 inches with a maximum error in measurement of 0.4 inches. So we have a table. Okay. Measure the radius to be 30. Well, a possible error of 0.4 inches, which means it could be 29.6 or it could be 30.4. So our it might actually be a slightly smaller or a slightly bigger. What's the possible error in the calculated area of the table between the 30 plus the 0.4, the 30 minus 0.4? What's that possible error? In other words, you know, how much of a difference? What's the, the outside extra area? Or if it's smaller, what's the inside extra area? What's the error in the actual area if I have a possible error of 0.4 away from 30? And express the error as relative error as well. Okay, so we'll do both of those. So the area, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, the differential, if I change 30 to 30.4 or to 29.6, that 0.4 is my differential. That's my dr. Okay? So dr here equals 0 0.4, plus or minus. Well, the change in the area, the differential of the area, dA, dr equals 2 pi r. Therefore, dA equals 2 pi r dr. If I change my area by a certain amount, my area is going to change by a certain amount. This dr is the error in the radius. dA is going to be the error in the area. That's what they're asking. Estimate the possible error in the calculated area. So we're actually going to express it as a differential. Okay, so here r equals 30. dr equals 0.4. Therefore, dA is equal to 2 times pi times 30 times 0 0.4. dA equals 75.4 square inches. That's the error. Error is 75.4 square inches. If I made a measurement of 30, if, I, if they're telling me that, that my error is off by 0.4 inches plus or minus, that means the area that I calculated, the error in the area is going to be plus 75.4 or minus 75.4. That's how big of a difference my error, my error in the area is going to be. So it's just using differentials. That's all that's going on here. Now, relative error, let's go to blue. Relative error. Well, the relative error is the error divided by the calculated value. Okay? So a couple of ways that we can do this. The, cal the, the error itself we calculated, that was 2 pi r dr, 2 pi r dr. The actual value, the area, is pi r squared. The pi cancels pi, the r cancels r. We get 2 times dr over r. So here, the relative error is 2 times dr, 0.4, over r, which is 30, 0 0.027. Okay? If I express this as a percentage, I would move this over and that would be 2.7%. That means that if my, if the error that I make in measurement from 30 is 0.4, that means the difference in area is going to be 2.7% of the area calculated at 30. If it's 30.4, that means I'm going to be over by 2.7% of my actual area measured at 30. If I'm at 29.6, if I, if the error is under the 30, 
that means I'm going to be short by 2.7% of my total area calculated at 30. That's what this means. So relative error is the error itself that you calculate divided by the actual area of the value that you measured. We could have done this directly. So here we actually did relative error. We used DA over A. Okay, the error over the actual value, we did it in terms of variables and then we plug the variables in. I could just have done it directly. So we could also have just done it directly. In other words, the definition of relative error is equal to the actual error over the actual value. Sorry, I should say the error over the actual value. DA over A. We found DA, we found 75.4. Well, area is equal to pi r squared. Area equals pi times 30 squared. Okay, is equal to 2827. 0.43. So, DA over A, error over actual value, error over actual value. So, equals 75.4 over 2827.43 equals 0.027. And again, this can give, if I want to speak in terms of percent, 2.7%. So that's what a differential does. So anytime you have a given function, go ahead and differentiate, move the dx over, and that tells you if I change x by a certain amount, how much does y change? That's it. It's what we've been really doing all along. So now we just want to think about it that way. So once again, if I have y equals sum f of x, dy dx equal, well, you know what, I think it's best if I just use actual functions here. So, an example, if y equals the sine of x, well, dy dx, the rate of change of sine of x is equal to the cosine of x. Well, if I just want to concentrate on how much does y change when I change x, I move the dx over. Now, if I change dx by 0.2 away from, let's say, the point pi. So if I'm at the point pi, and if I change, if I go 0.2 away from pi to the left or 0.2 away from pi to the right, y changes by the cosine of pi times the 0.2. That's the differential. That's the whole idea of the differential. And in this case, the differential actually gives me some error. If I have a measured value, and if I'm not quite sure about that measured value, let's say it's you know plus this way and plus this way, well, my measured value is my x0. The difference, positive or negative, is my dx. The y gives me the change in the overall function that I'm dealing with. In this case, it was area. Area equals pi r squared. Here, it's cosine x dx. So this is the dx, this is the dx. The differential itself gives me the total change of whatever it is I'm calculating. Hope that makes sense. Okay, thank you so much for joining us here at Educator.